I got the location of 500,000 llamas and found out everything I could about them. I will tell you how the locations are chosen and whether you can predict where they'll be, as well as some areas that you'll never find one in, and of course, some hilarious spawn locations. There has been a lot of publicity about some morally debatable ways of finding llamas during tournaments recently. Thankfully everything I have in this video is absolutely allowed as we're just looking at past games. There are 6 llamas in every game, no more no less. They could be spaced out like this, or like something else entirely. Llamas used to spawn in immediately and rendered in from an infinite view distance, so if you had a good resolution, an obsessive attitude and a bit of luck, you might have spotted a llama from the spawn island. But with the introduction of running llamas, this changed. Llamas now spawn in around the time that you're jumping from the bus, and the view distance has been reduced, so it is possible to spot them while you're gliding, but usually not before that. Now let's look at the locations of where llamas spawn in Chapter 3. There was a very important change in version 20.10 which was released on April 5th 2022, and here are 100,000 llamas from before that patch. You can see that they map out a neat square on the island, which meant that places like Camp Cuddle or the far north or south literally could not get a llama. In fact, this was an issue that rolled over from the previous map in Chapter 2, which I only have the heat map for, but again, you can see the square shape. Why was it like this? Presumably a bug of some sort in Epic's code, but this was fixed in patch 20.10. So here's a map of 400,000 llama locations from after that patch. This is what it is like right now in the game. Let's make a few initial observations. Firstly, the llamas can spawn almost anywhere on land. The edges of where they can spawn generally follow the coastline very precisely. Secondly, llamas generally do not spawn in water. The lakes, the large rivers and the bays all cannot get a llama, although the smaller rivers can. Llamas actually float, so it would still work if they were in water, but in general they're only on land. There's a couple of other things that we'll talk about in a moment, like a few llamas that do seem to be in the water, and much like I found in the zones videos, there are some dead areas with no llamas. But first, let's see whether there are areas of the map with more llamas than others. Here's the breakdown into four quadrants. The northwest has the most llamas with 27.3% of them, the northeast the fewest with 21.7%, but this is almost certainly just because there is more or less land in different directions. A heat map can help us out here, as it shows the density of the spawns very nicely. It becomes obvious from this that llamas are basically evenly spread across the land. All in all, it appears that llamas effectively spawn randomly in any of the valid positions. There is no difference between the density of llamas in the north or the south, and the centre of the map is not brighter than the edges either. Let's go back to our previous map, and I'll circle this area here, which appears to have no llamas. Let's zoom in on the northwest, and you'll see another area here in Covert Cavern without llamas, and also a tiny area on Shifty Mountain. Notably, all these circles are very high points on the map. Ignore the fact that the new Collider POI is more sparse than everything else, that's just because some of the data is from when there was just water there, and some was from when after the POI appeared. Let's dig further into the empty areas. Here are the llama locations that are above 80 meters in height. Then let's remove some of them to look at 82 meters and above, and keep going to 84, 86, 88, and finally the llamas at 90 meters and above. The remaining llamas surround those three areas that we mentioned just now, plus a couple on the collider that you may have seen in the preview yesterday. It's clear that llamas just can't spawn above this sort of height, and that limit is somewhere between 90 and 95 meters. Llamas in the real world live at an altitude of several thousand meters, but Fortnite has designed genetically modified llamas that can't live above 100 meters. Why can't llamas spawn super high then? My guess is that when the game starts, the llama spawns from a height of around 92 meters, and drops to the ground instantly. If the terrain is so high that it's under the ground at 92 meters, then another location has to be chosen. Just a theory though. There is one more small empty area with no llamas, which is down at the little shafty landmark. It seems like you cannot get a llama there if you're just above the mine. Let's move on to llamas in water. If I make the original plot, but with all the llamas larger, you will see them much more clearly out in the ocean. Why are they occasionally out there? So water level is defined as 0 meters in the data, so let's look at all llamas at a height of negative 2 meters or less. There are some that are right on the edge of the coast, and here is one such example. 
these are just weird edge cases where the game thinks that it will be on land, but it misses the platform it's supposed to be on and ends up in the water. As I said, llamas float so it comes to the surface after it lands. Now let's remove those by filtering for negative 5 meters and below, and now we're just left with what I'm calling ocean llamas. Why do ocean llamas exist? It's definitely not the movable boat as that wasn't in the right place when I checked the replays. It appears to be limited to certain games as well. Only 39 games out of almost 100,000 had an ocean llama, yet 11 of those had two ocean llamas and one even had three, so getting multiple in a game is far too much of a coincidence. I don't know why this happens, but if you do ever see an ocean llama, it's probably the rarest thing you'll ever find in a game. We've been looking at some relatively small weird cases here, so let's refocus on where llamas will realistically be in your game. As I said, there are six llamas in each game, but will they be spread out within the game, or can they be clustered together? I ran some mathematical tests to check whether they intentionally spread out llamas or cluster llamas within each game, or whether it's just random. To do this, I calculated the distribution of the distance between two random llama locations from the 500,000 that I have, and these are the results that I got. Then I compared it to the distribution of the distance between each pair of llamas within each game and the results were identical. The distributions matched each other, which implies that the llama locations within each game are independent of each other, and they do not intentionally spread them out or cluster them together. But the wonderful thing about randomness is that it can create some really fun outcomes. And here's the game that had the most clustered set of six llamas, all relatively close to each other. More impressive probably is the smaller clusters, and this game had five very close to each other, all in the area between Tonkas Speedway and Condo Canyon. I didn't hang around to see whether any players found all five, but it's safe to say they were in for a bit of surprise when they saw it. For the closest four llama cluster, we have this game which had four just south of Command Cavern. These could feasibly all have been seen at once, which would have been a crazy sight to come across if it was you passing by. Finally, let's look at the closest two llamas to each other. Given that we know the size of the map, the llama distribution, and that there are six llamas in each game, I can approximate the chance of having two llamas on top of each other in a game at about 1 in 100,000. Thankfully, we have so much data that this example was found. These two llamas were officially 0.32 meters apart from each other. Unfortunately, the player who triggered both of them had the worst aim I've ever seen and didn't manage to destroy either of them. And now that we're looking at some interesting llama spawns, let's find a few more examples of the weird and wonderful world of llamas. Here's the one on top of the collider that I mentioned earlier and also showed in the YouTube short yesterday. It spawned right on top, and when a player triggered it by gliding past, it ran into the collider, which as we know tends to throw things off at random angles. The llama went flying and tumbling through the air and landed, coincidentally, in a bush, slightly dazed but still alive. Unfortunately, nobody went and found it. Our next example is where a llama spawned in the cavern roof on top of a stalactite, but glitched into the map. It was completely out of sight, unless you managed to go into the replay mode and glitch into the map like I did for this still shot. Somehow, someone managed to trigger this llama from on top, and then it appeared out of thin air from the ceiling and fell onto the main building below. And here's another glitchy one from Command Cavern, where the llama was mostly under the platform, with only his ears and the very top of his head showing. A player comes past to fight someone else, and he triggers the llama, but the llama cannot escape from the ground. For a long time, he just jumps around in the same spot, until finally, when he's rifting out, he breaks free and disappears off. I would like to say a massive thank you to a guy called Nokken who has been working on all this stuff with me, and helped me a lot with all the data provision. And he runs a website called fortniteReplay.info. The link is down in the description. Have a look at the website. It's got some really interesting visualizations and a whole load of data resources. So thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate all the support you give me every time with the comments, likes, and of course, subscriptions. See you next time.